Sigmund Freud's Totem and Taboo is a book that explores the origins of human morality and religion. Freud argues that the primitive societies of the past were organized around a totem, or a sacred object, which was the focus of religious rituals and taboos. He suggests that these taboos were created to protect the totem from being destroyed or desecrated, and that they were the basis for the development of morality and religion in human society. Freud also argues that the totem was a symbol of the father figure, and that it was used to create a sense of unity and solidarity among members of the tribe. Finally, Freud suggests that the totem was a source of power and authority, and that it was used to control the behavior of members of the tribe. Freud's ideas provide a plausible explanation of why certain behaviors are seen as socially acceptable, while others are seen as taboo. In essence, Freud argues that culture and family units determine the acceptable level of behavior in a given context. This is why certain behaviors might be seen as normal in one family unit but prohibited in another. Thus, Freud's Totem and Taboo serves as a fascinating exploration of the development of human behavior and its connection to the unconscious. Freud's idea that the totem was a symbol of the father figure and was used to establish control over a group is particularly interesting. He suggests that these early forms of control were the basis for the development of morality and religion, as well as a sense of unity and solidarity among members of the tribe. In many ways, Freud's analysis is applicable to modern society as well. We still use symbols of power and authority to control the behavior of others. For example, many governments around the world rely on symbols of power such as flags and monuments to establish a sense of national unity and identity. Similarly, organizations and corporations rely on logos, trademarks, and slogans to create a sense of loyalty and unity amongst their employees and customers. Although the context has changed, the underlying principle remains the same. Symbols of power serve to control behavior and establish a shared sense of solidarity. In this way, Fru's Totem and Taboo still provides an insightful look into the evolution of human behavior and morality. By looking at the rituals and taboos of primitive societies, Freud was able to draw conclusions about the development of morality and religion in human societies. He argued that tribes and families develop their own customs and beliefs as a way of controlling their members and maintaining social order. Freud asserted that these primitive methods of control ultimately became the basis for the development of more organized and complex systems of morality and religion. In the book, Freud discusses the Oedipal complex, which is the idea that a son may have romantic or sexual feelings towards his mother. Freud believed that this complex was a fundamental part of the human psyche and that it had to be suppressed or redirected in order for an individual to develop properly. He argued that religion and morality developed as a way of controlling these strong impulses and redirecting them into more socially acceptable channels. By understanding and accepting the Oedipal complex, Freud was able to explain the development of human morality and the origin of religious belief. The Oedipal complex, according to Freud, is a fundamental conflict between the father and the son. Freud believed that this conflict was the root of many social issues, such as aggression and feelings of guilt. He argued that this complex was a result of unconscious desires, which could be repressed through socialization and morality. Freud's work on the Oedipal complex provides an important insight into the development of human behavior and morality, and it is an integral part of totem and taboo. Essentially, his concept of sublimation is the ability to redirect one's instincts into more socially acceptable forms. Of course, all of this is very controversial. Freud's ideas about the unconscious and the oedipal complex were seen as radical and absurd by many in his time, and even today some of his theories are still met with skepticism. The reason for this is that Freud's view of human development and human psychology has been both validated and disproven. The fact is that many people do not fit into Freud's mold, and he did not attempt to do so himself. Instead, he simply offered a way of understanding how our instincts can be channeled and repressed in order to develop in a healthy and productive manner. The dynamic described in the Oedipal complex is argued against by many psychoanalysts. For example, Melanie Klein, an influential psychoanalyst, argued that the Oedipal complex is not necessary for healthy development. She argued that the primary source of human conflict is the unconscious desire for love and acceptance from both parents, regardless of gender. Klein argued that the resolution of this conflict is not necessarily linked to the suppression of instinctive desires, as Freud believed, but to the development of a healthy ego. Another psychoanalyst who disputed Freud's view of the Oedipal complex was Karen Horney, who argued that Freud's emphasis on aggressive impulses in the Oedipal stage was incorrect and not supported by research in psychology. 
Eric Erickson, who followed in Freud's footsteps, argued that the Oedipal complex was a part of the process of identity formation and not necessarily related to morality. He argued that healthy psychological development involves the negotiation of conflicting ideas and that the individual's identity is formed through this process. In this way, Erickson's theories diverge from those outlined in Totem and Taboo. Finally, René Girard argued that conflicts between fathers and sons and between brothers arise out of the need for love and acceptance. These conflicts, he argued, are the result of the desire for recognition and the desire for power. The desire for recognition, he argued, is an aspect of the desire for love and acceptance and is connected to the fact that recognition of one's existence is often perceived as a threat. The desire for power, on the other hand, is connected to the desire for love and acceptance as it can be seen as a way of protecting oneself from the threat of rejection. The other controversial aspect of this book is that Freud's theory is based on the assumption that morality and religion are products of the human mind. He does not believe that these things come from a divine source, but instead that humans create their own morality and religion. This has been met with criticism from those who believe that morality and religion are firmly rooted in an external source. Other criticisms include the notion that Freud's theories are too focused on primitive cultures and that they don't take into account the complex and varied moral systems found in modern societies. In conclusion, the origin of religious belief and the development of human morality are very complex and multifaceted. Freud's work on the Oedipal complex provides an important insight into the development of human behavior, but his ideas have been both validated and disproven. Ultimately, there is no one single path to psychological health, but understanding how conflicts between parents, children, and siblings arise can help individuals to develop healthier relationships. Despite this criticism, Freud's totem and taboo remains an important part of the study of human behavior, and it provides a useful framework for understanding the evolution of morality and religion. By looking at the rituals and taboos of primitive societies, Freud was able to draw conclusions about the development of morality and religion in human societies. This is still true today, as we can look to ancient customs and beliefs to better understand our modern world.